Hey guys, Chris Cook in Nashville here, and we're gonna do an exciting recipe video for you guys today. I appreciate your patience. I know it's been a little while since I uh, got a recipe video out for you, but this one was worth waiting for. I've been working on this one for a little while, so I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this. Today, we are doing carnivore rice. I'm gonna show you how to make it as conveniently as possible with very basic ingredients and we're going to turn this into something really, really cool. So stick around for carnivore white rice with Chris Cook in Nashville. Okay, guys. So these are our ingredients. I have four cups of egg whites and I have snow cap lard. And then I have a bowl that's made out of glass. It's steam safe. It's going to go in my steamer because that's how we're going to be cooking this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of lard and you're going to see I'm going to grease this bowl really, really well. Now, unfortunately, egg whites just kind of stick to things. There's not a whole lot we can really do about that. But going ahead and greasing our bowl or whatever container it is that will fit in your steamer like this, it does make it come out at least a little bit easier. And, and that way, most of your egg whites don't end up sticking in your bowl. So we're just going to grease that really, really well. Okay, so now that my bowl is fully greased, you can see I've got it rubbed into all of the corners there. Next, all we need to do is put our egg whites into our bowl. Now, the egg whites that I'm using are just the pasteurized kinds you can get in a container. I just did that for convenience. You can separate your own eggs if you want. You just need four cups of egg whites, and that's going to make four servings for four people. So a cup of egg whites per person. Okay, we're going to put that in our steam safe bowl. And I want to make sure there's a little bit of room at the top because the egg may expand just a little bit as it starts to steam. You don't want it to expand over the top and make a mess. And you want to make sure whatever container you're putting this in will fit inside of your steamer basket. So here's my steamer basket. And you can see when I set the bowl in there, there is plenty of room. It sits lower than the steamer basket. So I can put the lid on top to steam this when I set it over the steaming water everything will be good to go. That's the setup we're gonna to use to cook these. Okay, so in my pot here, I have probably three to four inches of water. You really just need to make sure that there's enough water in there to steam for about 30 minutes. You can see there it's about three inches and that'll be plenty to create the amount of steam that we need because this is only gonna steam for about 30 minutes. So I've got my water on the stove and I'm going to bring that up to temperature, up to boil and then the steamer basket will be set on top just like that. So I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna get the water boiling. Once everything is boiling and we're nice and steamy, all we need to do is set our steamer basket on there and that steam is gonna come up. It's gonna cook the egg white, but it's gonna keep it from getting hard or dry or puffing too much. It's going to cook it a little more gently. You can see the steam is being trapped inside there. So we're gonna steam it like this. And I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Now, it may take a little longer. It may happen a little faster, depending on how deep your pan is or your bowl is that you have your egg whites in. But I'm doing 30 minutes for this. Okay, and after 30 minutes is up, you can really see that steam is rolling. It got going really, really good. That's totally fine. We're just going to take the lid off. There's a little bit of water that has collected on top there from the steaming. So the egg is actually cooked all the way through. I did double check it but the egg is cooked all the way through. That's just a little bit of water that's collected on top. No problem. We're gonna go ahead and take that off of the pan and set that over to the side. Once we're over here, I'm gonna move the pan out of the way and I'm gonna take the bowl out. Now I've been letting this cool, but I did not let it cool enough. So make sure you let this come down to kind of room temperature. Uh, and then we're going to flip this over and we're just going to let the egg white fall out of the bowl, hopefully. Now, mine did stick a little bit, so if yours does, all you need to do is take a butter knife, just go around the edges. That's usually where it's going to stick the most is kind of on the edges, maybe a little bit on the bottom, mostly on the edges. We're just going to run a butter knife around it, loosen it up, and that way I can flip the bowl over and hopefully get the egg to fall out. Okay, once the egg is loosened up, we're gonna flip the bowl over. I'm just kind of shaking it and tapping it a little bit, trying to get that to let loose. You can see it still really, really wanted to stick. And sometimes that happens, but if that happens to you, it's okay, don't worry about it. This is gonna get chopped up anyway, so we don't need this to be really pretty or in one huge piece. So I'm just kind of loosening the bottom there with the butter knife where it's stuck again. And I'm just gonna dump this out. 
Now, again, if you let yours cool longer than I did, it will start to shrink away from the bowl anyway, so you won't have as much of a problem. But if not, and it sticks, you can just do what I did here, and a little bit sticks to the bottom of the bowl, no big deal. Now I'm gonna take a food processor. Now you can do this with a knife, or you can do this with a food processor, or by whatever means you have. But essentially, all we need to do is turn this egg white mixture into a chopped up rice looking sort of thing. I have a little bit of extra beef gelatin in a uh, bowl right there, and I'm gonna show you what to do with that in a moment. That's a couple of tablespoons of beef gelatin. But I'm just gonna take the butter knife and I'm just cutting this egg white into chunks. Okay, it actually kinda looks like cubed tofu or something like that when you get done. It has that kind of springy texture. And this is really hot, so it's kind of burning my fingers a little bit here, but I'm just going to drop my blade into my food processor and go ahead and put the egg white in the food processor. You can see the dog is waiting to see if I'm going to give any of this to her. She loves when I make eggs. Okay, once everything is in the food processor, I'm going to throw on the lid and put the pusher down in there, and I'm just going to pulse this a couple of times, okay? I don't want to hit the on button because I'm not trying to blend this up, I just wanna chop it slightly. So I'm gonna use the pulse button and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm kinda of double checking right here because I wanna make sure that it's not uh, too chunky but that it's also not too fine. You wanna make sure not to go too long. So do a few pulses check it. You can see I'm using a spoon, kind of pulling a few of the big pieces that are caught on the sides. But overall, I'm just kind of stirring it around, and I want to make sure it has sort of a texture similar to rice. Now, this is not rice yet, but this is the beginning stages of giving us that rice experience because we need the right size pieces. So once this is chopped into a rice sort of texture, we can move forward. So my rice is chopped up into the right texture. I'm going to take my food processor, take that bowl off of there, and I'm just gonna dump it into a larger bowl. You need a large bowl because we're going to actually be tossing this around in the bowl here, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that using that beef gelatin in that little bowl on the side. Okay, I'm gonna take all of my rice in this bowl. You can see it's already kind of wanting to clump together just a little bit like rice. The surface area that we've created on all of this egg is what's going to make this not only taste like rice, but act like rice. Now I have one to two tablespoons of beef gelatin here. This is a couple of tablespoons. We're gonna sprinkle a little of this at a time over the rice. You do not wanna put all of this in at one time. That's probably about a quarter of it. And then I'm gonna take my other hand and I'm gonna gently push my fingers under the rice and then fold it over. Okay, you can use a spatula to do this, but you get a lot more control with your fingers. That's why I do this. This is a technique I actually learned when I owned a bakery when you're working with dough. It's much more gentle to use your fingers. Okay, so I've mixed that through. Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more and I'm just trying to get a thin coating over the top and then gently folding that in. I don't wanna crush all of those little rice granule shapes that I've worked so hard to create but I wanna put the thin coating of beef gelatin on the outside of each of these grains, if you will, of rice. It's part of what's going to make this taste and feel in the mouth a lot more like rice, okay? So now I'm gonna put this extra beef gelatin in here, okay? So I've done about three quarters of it now, just folding it over. If you put it in faster, you're going to get clumps of beef gelatin because there is some liquid still in this egg white right now that we're going to have to deal with to make this work more like rice. Okay, so I'm continuing to fold this in. You wanna make sure to do this slowly because if you put too much beef gelatin at a time, you're gonna end up getting clumps. And once you get clumps of beef gelatin in the rice, it's much more difficult to get that to come out. So I'm sprinkling a little bit more. That's about three quarters of the beef gelatin that I had done, so that's the last part of it. There's no real rule as to how much you should or should not use. You just wanna make sure you're doing it a little at a time so that you don't get clumps. We're gonna get that well folded through so that every grain of this egg white rice is coated in just a little bit of beef gelatin. And you're gonna feel it start to get kind of sticky against your fingers as that beef gelatin starts to combine with a little bit of liquid on the outside of those egg white grains. And as it starts to clump together, I'm just kind of lifting it up more 
stirring that around and you can see it's starting to look almost like rice that would be clumping together or sticking together just a little bit. This is going to be a big secret in making this work for a number of different recipes. Okay, we're on to the next phase of the process. I have a cookie sheet here. I have a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to put that parchment paper on the cookie sheet. You could do this with a Silpat mat or if you have a silicone pan or something like that. Just something that rice doesn't stick to too awful much or that this egg white rice rather will not stick to. I'm going to dump this egg white rice onto the piece of parchment paper. Now, I'm not using any fat to grease it. I'm not doing any of that. That's why I like parchment paper because it absorbs some of the excess liquid and it also does not stick. I can also pick the parchment paper up fold it around, move it around, do what I need to do in case anything is sticking. So now I'm just going to take the white rice mixture and I'm going to spread it as evenly as I can across my cookie sheet. And this doesn't have to be super specific, but you do want to make sure to get this spread out into a fairly thin layer. So if you only have small cookie sheets, uh, maybe they're not as large as this or you're using a little silicone pan that doesn't have a lot of surface area, maybe use a couple of them because you want to spread this out in a thin layer so that we can do the next step of the process properly. You can also see I'm grabbing a couple of large pieces here that didn't get chopped up and I'm just using my thumb and finger to smash them into smaller pieces. It just makes it a little bit more like rice that way to just catch those large pieces as you find them. Okay, there is our pan of white rice. Now, we're going to go over to the oven. I have my oven set at 325 degrees. I'm going to stick this pan of egg white rice into the oven because we're going to dehydrate it a little bit. I'm going to set that for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to pull it out and double check what it looks like. So after 10 minutes, we're going to pull it out. And you can see it's steamy. What we're doing is we're starting to pull some of the excess moisture off of the outside and a little bit from the inside of the rice. So I'm going to take a spatula. We're going to start flipping this and turning this over. We're making sure it's not sticking. See, I'm starting at the edge and kind of mixing the edge of the rice into the center. The edge is going to dry out faster. So make sure that you start at the edge, stir this towards the center, and then break up those clumps. That beef gelatin is going to melt. It's going to start to cause the rice to stick together, which is not a bad thing, but it will affect the way it dries. So make sure as you're stirring this, you can use the spatula or whatever tool you're using, kind of break up those clumps because we're going to stir this all together, get all of those edges into the center, stir it together, and then we're gonna spread it back out so that we can continue putting it in the oven and drying it repeatedly. Okay, so here I've got it all stirred together, and now I'm just gonna start smoothing it back out just like we did before. We're gonna spread it back out onto the cookie sheet as even as possible. This, again, does not have to be extremely specific, but you wanna to try to make it an even layer so that the rice can dry out in the oven as evenly as possible. Okay, we're going to go back in the oven, still at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to set this for another 10 minutes and continue drying this out. Okay, so after another 10 minutes, we're going to do the same process. We're going to take it back out of the oven. Okay, you can see, again, nice and steamy, and you can kind of see the edges are starting to square away a little bit, like they, they look almost a little bit more straight edge and square. That's because it's starting to dry out more on the edge and that beef gelatin is kind of pulling that rice in, pulling it together and making it more um, stable on the edges so it kind of shrinks up and creates these dry edges. So that's why we want to make sure to spin that dry edge over the top of the rest of the rice and stir that all in. So we're going to get every edge, we're going to stir this all together and we're going to repeat the same process. Okay, so we've stirred it all together and we've broken up the clumps. Now we're going to spread it back out across the cookie sheet. And something that I kind of do is take the top edge of the spatula and once I've got it spread out, I'm going to kind of poke down through it to make sure that one, there aren't any clumps that I have missed, just like this. But two, it actually creates these kind of little wells and little ravines almost as it were in the egg whites and it just helps them to dry more evenly in the center as well. 
So once that's ready, we're going to take that, put it back in the oven at 325 for another 10 minutes, and then we'll check on it again. Okay, here it is coming out of the oven again. Now, this is a total so far of 30 minutes of drying time. Depending on your oven, depending on how thin the layer of rice is, how big the recipe is you're making, the size of your cookie sheet, all of these things, this can be affected one way or the other. You may find at 20 or 30 minutes that your rice is already dry enough. You may be like me, where you need to do it several times. Uh, you may want your rice to have a little bit more of a dry texture, and you can take it even further. But what I'm essentially looking for is you can see that there's not a lot of liquid on the bottom of the rice against the parchment paper. You can see the grains are starting to kind of separate. It's, it's starting to act almost like a drier rice, like they're not wet, squishy egg white anymore. They're starting to dry out, and they're starting to become a little bit more the way that I would expect rice to react. So I'm going to spread this back out. I wanted mine a little bit drier than this. And this is kind of a thing you just are going to have to play with and figure out how you like your egg white rice. Do you want it a little drier in texture? Do you want it a little bit softer? The drier you go, the chewier it's going to be and the more rice texture on the tooth it's going to have. But if you get it too dry, it's not necessarily the most pleasant to eat that way. I kind of messed it up one time as I was experimenting with this, and it was a little hard. It was, it was okay, but it was a little bit harder than I would like it. So I wanted this a little bit more, so I'm going to put it back in for another 10 minutes. And then here it is at the end of that 10 minutes. This is after 40 minutes. I stirred it all together. And you can see this is acting very much like white rice. Now... It looks a lot like white rice. It acts a lot like white rice. It doesn't really have too much flavor. We've basically cooked off all of the sulfuric gases that come from an egg. By doing this, we've cooked all that away. It doesn't taste like egg anymore. It's going to be very neutral in flavor, which is part of why it works as white rice. You can see the grains there are really separate, and it's going to have a flavor that works really well for white rice. My fingers are also getting a little sticky because that that beef gelatin is drying, and you can now see as I go to stir this when it's on the pan, it's really, really almost crumbly looking and very much like a white rice. And just make sure to let this cool to room temperature, that will complete the drying process. So in this little container, I have one teaspoon of egg white powder, a half a teaspoon of beef gelatin powder, and two teaspoons of water. Mix those together into a paste, let them sit for a while, and continue just mixing and mixing and mixing until they combine. Then we're gonna take that sort of gelatinous mixture now, and we're actually gonna spread that on the rice. We're not gonna cook this anymore. So this egg white protein powder and beef gelatin that is going on this rice is what's gonna help this taste like a grain because those two things combine together when not being cooked any more than they already are, have a sort of grain flavor. So now I've got the gelatin in there with that egg white powder, and I'm just rubbing it between my hands because that helps to mix in what is kind of a gel substance into this egg white rice. And you can see it all crumbles apart and it acts just like rice. Once it's all mixed together, there is our bowl of egg white rice. You can do so many different things with this. I'm going to be giving you guys a bunch of recipes that I like to use this for, showing you different ways that I use this now for our family. But that right there, folks, is completely zero-carb, clean carnivore, egg white rice. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the carnivore white rice. Now, there's a lot of uses for this white rice. I'm going to be sharing some of the recipes that I use this for and different ways you can use it but that is the basic. So you can make this, you can keep it around in batches, and you can use this for a lot of other recipes. This particular recipe made four servings, roughly. Um, that's about a cup of egg whites per person. Um, it's pretty dense when you go to eat it, so there's a lot of protein, it's very filling, so you won't need any more than that, I don't think, for each person, but um, this is a super cool recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, make sure to like, share, comment below. Let me know you're here watching. Let me know if you make this, how it turns out, and what you like to do with it. Um, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know every time I release a new recipe video like this, you can do cool keto and carnivore things for your families. 
and uh, just tell your friends and everybody that I'm here and let's grow this thing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Eat your meat, love your life. This is Chris Cook in Nashville and I'll catch you guys in the next one.